There is no one like the Lord. Amen. No one else like the Lord. You know, Paul was trying to straighten up that, uh, that Corinthian church. And they had all the gifts of the Spirit operating in the church. But yet he called them carnal. Because uh, when it comes to they were, there was strife and division among them because some were saying, you know, I was baptized by Peter and I was baptized by Apollos and another one saying, well, I was baptized by, by Paul. And, uh, and he said, you know what? They said, I don't even think I baptized very many of you at all. I just baptized a few here. He said, might have, might have baptized. He couldn't even remember who, who he had baptized. He said, but... You know, I didn't come, you know, to baptize. He said, I come preaching Jesus Christ and Him crucified. He said, then he goes on to say, he says, the Lord says, no flesh, no flesh shall glory in my presence. No flesh shall glory in my presence. It's all about Jesus. It ain't about who baptized you. It's, it, it's all about the one that made it possible for you to be baptized. Right. Amen? It's the one who died on the cross. And you know, when our egos get in the way, when we get lifted up in our own pride, that's when we begin to fall low. Yeah. But then when we get low and humble ourselves in the sight of God, we begin to give God all the glory, all the credit. You know, you didn't get yourself out of your stuff. He got you out. He brought you out of the miry clay. He's the one who set you on the rock to stay. He's the one who put a song in your heart. Amen? He's the one who did that. So he deserves the glory. Amen? Come on, give the Lord a hand yeah. clap of praise this morning. Hallelujah! Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Amen. If you have your Bibles this morning, turn with me to the book of Ephesians. I'm sorry, but I just can't get out of this portion right now. This is just. And that crack in the door just really bothered me. <laughs> Don't excuse me for a moment. <laughs> I hope this precious air is just the right where it is. <laughs> we paid a lot for it last Sunday. <clears throat> Thank y'all. Thank y'all for your generosity, and uh, you know, we was able to get purchase that air, air conditioner last, this last coming Monday or two, that we went was, had it put in uh, Friday, and uh, you know that air, I didn't know exactly how much it was gonna cost, but I think we, we were right there. I mean, so if God got to dealing with your heart, he was dealing with your heart for a reason, because it come out just just right there, just, just, just right. Amen. Uh, you know. Amen. You have fifty dollars left. Yeah, fifty dollars left. So it was right there, and uh, you know, you, it says a lot. You know, I heard a preacher say one time, "You can, you can give without love, but it's impossible to love without giving." Amen. You know, you know the love of God that's in our heart because of our our generosity. He first, you know, it's impossible to to give what you what you don't have. You know, you ask people to to give forgiveness, and you know what? Most of the time they hadn't forgiven themselves, hadn't asked God to forgive them, don't know the love of God. You know, you, it's hard to give when you ain't got. It. Amen. And so, uh, God first loved us. God's given us, God has blessed us. I don't know about you, but I had $50 when I got married. <laughs> How much do we have left? $50. $50. I'm not, I'm, a lot of that my own doing, but, but uh, I'm, I'm, the Lord has brought me. 
God has brought me a long way. And, and, uh, hey, I'm not living in a mansion on Wall Street or anything like that, but you know, I got a roof over my head. I got shoes on my feet. I got clothes on my back. And I got, promise you, I got plenty to eat. And I thank the Lord. Amen. Amen. And I'm learning to be content with godliness. To be content. It's better to to dwell in the, in, in the you know, at a, at, a, at a table that don't have much to live in the tents of wickedness. Yes. It really is. But I know this for sure. I know God loves me. And I know that God is going to provide for me. And He's going to provide for you if we put Him first in our life. He'll do, he'll do the same. He's no respect for the persons. He really is. God don't love me any more than He loves you, Ruby. He don't love you any more than He loves me. He loves us. And He loves us. You know... We were talking about something the other day, and this is kind of off the subject, but I, I got a finish it. About healing. And, and uh, somebody said, well, does God always... I, I, I believe it's God's will to heal us. If it wasn't God's will to heal us, then He'd never care us to heaven because there's no more there. That's the ultimate place to be. And we live in these bodies, and they're, they're getting older. <laughs> Lord, our, yeah. They're getting older, and they've got a they've got a, they've got a limitation to them. And thank God for His healing while we're here. We don't have to just hope for the pie in the sky. We we can have our healings here today. And, and uh, but if we don't get that that healing here, we definitely get it there. Amen. But it's, I believe it's God's, I, I always have to, I believe it's God's will to heal us. He's a healer. Yes. He's Jehovah Rapha. Yes. The Lord God who healeth thee. His yes. name proclaims that he is a healer. Yes. Amen. And this morning, it's not that we possess healing, but we possess the healer. Amen. Oh, yes. And the Bible says, Yes. I'm just reading it the other day. You know, it's God's will that none of us perish. It's God's will that none of us perish. That's God's will. But you know what? There's going to be people perishing. You know why? Because they don't receive the Savior. Amen? Yes. He is our Savior. And don't receive God's plan for our life. But to as many as received him, to them gave he power yes. to become sons of God. Can you say amen to that? Amen. All right, let's get to it. Ephesians chapter 2. It says, Now therefore, verse 19, Now therefore, you are no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints. And of the household of God. And are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets. Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. In whom all the building fitly framed together groweth. Groweth unto a holy temple in the Lord. In whom? In Christ. In whom? You also are built it together. For a habitation of God through the Spirit. Father, I give you praise and I give you all the glory, Lord, this morning. I ask you, Lord, once again, Lord, to help me. Touch these lips of clay, God. Touch, revive my heart today with a fresh dose of the Holy Ghost this morning. I ask God you bless the ear of the listener, God, to hear what you have them to hear. Lord, we'll be quick to give you all the praise and all the glory that everybody said. Amen. Amen. What has been impressed in my heart is that part where it says, but you are now in the household of God. The household of God. Now, I've, I've, I've talked about I've talked about David 
And when he was established as king, he says, is there anyone in Jonathan's house, in the house of Saul, that I could show kindness to? Why? Because he made a promise to Jonathan. They exchanged weapons. They, it was a covenant of friendship. Jonathan told David, I got your back. David said, I got your back. They were friends. They loved one another. And they had an agreement. They had a covenant between themselves, a promise. And someone said, well, there's, there's a Mephibosheth. He's on the backside of the desert somewhere. When Saul's house was leaving the palace. His maid dropped him as a child and he became a cripple. and was a cripple for the rest of his life. But David said, go get him and bring him to my table. And as long as David was king of Israel, that crippled boy had a place at the table of God. Guess what? Jesus is still king. Yes. Jesus is still at the throne. Amen? Amen? Jesus has still invited you and I through the covenant of His Son, Jesus Christ, that we can eat at the Master's table all day long, anytime we want to. Why? Because God has promised it to us. He said, I will never leave you nor will I ever forsake you. You can count on it. That old devil will come to you and tell you, but God said, left you now because you've got all kinds of trouble going on in your life. But that's a lie from the pit of heaven. Here's a song we sing. Fear is a liar. Worry is a liar. The devil is a liar. So put it in the fire. The other day I was gathering out some stuff out of my garden. The old vine was, was getting up. Uh, you know, brown and everything. I pulled them all up and put them in a clump. Let them dry out a little bit more. Another day, I set a fire to it. When I set a fire, a old, old big old wolf rat ran out of it. I said, ain't that something? That's what we need to do. We need to turn the fire up. Amen. Oh, yeah. Turn the fire up and get rid of all yes. of the critters. Yes. Yes. Amen. Yes. Yes. Put it in the fire. That's what that, uh, Paul did. He shook that old snake off in the fire. <laughs> shook it off. But it's a promise, it's a covenant of the household. The household, the membership become a member of the household of David. And Paul is saying, you, because of the grace of God, because if you're receiving the grace of God by faith, then I accept it, I receive it. You have become a member of the household of God. Then I talked to you about old uh, Ebed Edom, who was an official carrier of the ark. But they didn't, Israel didn't have the ark because it had been in captivity because some, some prophet Eli and his sons had backslidden and thought that they could take the ark when they were losing the war. They didn't realize they were losing the war because they backslidden. But they thought they could take the ark of the covenant and take it into battle and bring it there and then everybody saw the ark coming like a cross carrier. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. I'm going to tell you, you can carry a cross all you want. That's like even today when we take communion. You can drink that cup and you can bite that cracker. But it's just a cracker and, and a cup. Until you realize what it stands for. That's right. what, it, what, what we're remembering. What God has done for yes, us. Amen. Yes, yes. But they shouted. They thought, well, we're going to shout loud. You, you can get loud all you want. But if you ain't got Jesus in your heart, it ain't going to do you no good. That's right. Absolutely. And they shouted. But they still lost the war. And actually, their prized possession, the Ark of the Covenant, which represented the presence of God, was now in the enemy camp. But guess what happens when the presence of God gets at the enemy of the camp and give them all hemorrhoids? <laughs> That'll stir you up. <laughs> when the whole country's got hemorrhoids. 
<laughs> and they said, we got, we can't. I'm telling you, the enemy can't handle the presence of God. That's why God wants us to praise Him. Because He inhabits the praise. He's a, the devil, he'll run out like that old rat run out of that pile the other day. He can't stand it when God's people truly give God a heart of praise. Not just rend their clothes, but rend their heart before God. Say, Lord, I'm nothing without you. Lord, I recognize God. You're the one who saved me. You're oh, the one yes. who healed me, Lord. Yes. You're the one who delivered me. Lord, I honor you, God. Not yes. just with my lips, God, but with my heart, God. I praise you with everything, God, yes. that is within me, God. Yes. I praise your holy name. Yes, Lord. Yes. Because you're so worthy of my praise. So, there, the, there is the ark, the presence of God in the enemy camp. And they don't want to, they, you know, they put it like a trophy. A trophy in their little trophy chest with all their, their gods on the wall. And they had their god Dagon, their, that god, got that god. They worship fish god. A lot of people think they carry the preacher fishing. They go catch a bunch of fish. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody's guilty. <laughs> and because the presence of God was there, when they come, when the priest come back the next day, an old fish god done toppled over. Now I wouldn't want to serve a god that topples over. And, and, and broke his head off and his hands off and his feet off. And, and what kind of God is that? You know? But that's what they worship. And guess what? Hey, guess what? The, even the people of God followed suit along that way. Worshiping something that they made with their own hands. Just like today, there's a lot of people that are worshiping what they do and what they've done. We're not to worship what we're doing, and we're not to worship what we've done. We're worshiping to the one, to the creator of the heavens and the earth, the one who made yes. us, the one who created us, yes. the one who breathed life into us. Yes, amen. Amen. And they, they said, we got to get, what, what do we do? We said, let's, let's get some, let's get some cow, like a cow, mama cow. Hey, this is how we're going to determine if it's God or not. I'm going to get a mama cow and two little babies. And I'm, we're going we're gonna to hitch up that mama cow to a cart. And we're going to make that mama cow haul that cart with the ark on it. And then baby's going to be behind us and say, Mama, come back, please. I don't know cow calls, but that's all. Move. <laughs> You know how them old cows, man, they want their mama, they want that mama's milk. But it had to be God. It had to be God to lead that mama cow away from her babies. But God did. God said, I'm going back to my camp, my people, my people who are called by my name. That's where God will dwell with his people that knows his name, that calls on his name. There it went. Then it wound up in a place. And they didn't know what to do with it. And a couple of guys, they trying to get it into the camp. And the Bible says that cart. You see, the cart. Now, the Philistines, they didn't know. The world don't know. The natural man don't understand the things of God. But the children of Israel should have known how the ark is to be carried. The presence of God was to be carried on their shoulders, not on a cart. And so it, it went across a threshing floor. And one of the guys reached out to stabilize it, and he died instantly. He touched, his hand touched. And he landed at Obed Edom's place. 
See, Obed-Edom was a descendant of the ones who were supposed to carry the ark. Every, he was a member of the priesthood, but everyone had their certain things that they did. That was his lot to carry the ark. So the place landed at the place that it was supposed to be, who was supposed to carry that ark and bring it into the house of God. But everybody was scared of it at this point. Woo, who could touch the things of God? Who? And so a search was made and the, the book was brought out. This is the way God, this is, way, this is the way God wants to be presented. This is the way God, you know, everybody thinks, I'm going to do it my way. Let's do it this way. Let's do it that way. No, there ain't the one way. That's the way of God. Amen? God has one way. One right. way to one salvation. Way. And that's through the blood of yeah. Jesus. That's through the it ain't your way, it's his way. It's his way. It's the way. He's the way. He's the truth. He's the life. Yes. Are you calling me, boy? Are you pre come on, be a preacher. I like I like that. And so it's an old bad eat time. I, I didn't mean to go into all this. I really didn't. I, Ooh, I got a whole bunch of stuff up there. But it landed at his house. And the Bible says, David heard. David heard that God was blessing Obed Edom's house. Not just Obed Edom. I'm going to tell you when the blessing of God. I'm going to tell you, I think I got some of Grandma's blessings. I think I got some of Grandpa's blessings. I think I got some of Sister Shirley's blessings. I think I got some of Brother Gerald's blessings. Because when the blessings are coming, if you get in the proximity, hallelujah, yes. it's on you too. Yes, yes. Hallelujah. Amen. And the Bible says every. That's why the Bible says to, to believers, your children are sanctified because of your faith in Christ. Meaning this, is they've got a great and wonderful opportunity to be saved. Better than that in the world because you are a believer because they see God working in your life. Amen. They may depart for a season, but the way you brought them up will not depart from them. Hallelujah! Yes. God's got a target on their back. As a matter of fact, they're going to be miserable until they come to Jesus. They are. But the household of Obed-Edom was blessed. It said that everything that pertained to Obed-Edom's house, everything, for three months. Talking about a revival. I feel like I have a revival in your home for three months. <laughs> How would you like for everything you touch to be blessed? Well, you are blessed. And we don't claim it like we should. But we are blessed. Matter of fact, says you're blessed. Amen. You're blessed like old faithful Abraham is blessed. You know how blessed faithful Abraham was? Blessed. And the reason he was so blessed is he, God said, I am going to bless you so that you can be a blessing. What would you rather be just somebody getting scraps all the time? Or would you like to be the one where your cup's running over and you're able to bless somebody else? That's where God wants you and I to be. To be blessed so that we can be a blessing. And I'm not just talking about material things. I'm talking about spiritual things. And I'll be honest with you, when God brings something to you, God blesses you materially. When the Spirit of God blesses you, it is a spiritual blessing. Yes. If God can rain manna down and feed millions of people in a desert place, if God in a moment's time can cause the wind to, to bring quail and they land on the ground and the table is spread for millions of people. Yes. If God watches over the sparrow, He's 
watching over you and I. Hallelujah. Amen. And Paul says, we are of the household of God. You belong in the household. The household of God. I was reading about Joseph. And after he's had a conversation with his brothers, he played a little get back at you. And after he saw them squirming and struggling, and, and then when he told them, I'm your brother. I'm the one you throw in that pit and mm -hmm. sold in the slave. Can you imagine? Because they knew who Joseph was. They knew that was Pharaoh's right-hand man. He could execute me at any time, any moment. He could have got back at them. But you know what? He forgave them. As a matter of fact, he said, don't blame yourselves. Don't condemn yourselves. Forgive yourself. Forgive yourself what you did. Because I've learned that it, it wasn't you that done this. God is the one who put me in this place. And everything that I have gone through, my trials, my tribulations, and my troubles, it was all for a purpose. Yes. God brought me to this place so that I could provide a place for you. Yes. Yes. He put me here. And it says, and he put them in the land of Goshen. He said, I want you to go back and tell my daddy what you've seen. I want you to go back and tell my daddy. I want, I want you to bring my daddy back. I want you to bring my daddy here. God put me in this place. Y'all don't understand. I'm in charge of everything. I'm like a father to Pharaoh. I'm like a father to Pharaoh. They, he trusts my wisdom. Every decision that is made in this kingdom is because of me. I say who lives or dies, who gets or who don't get. I'm in charge. Go get my daddy and bring him here. God sent me in this place because he said there's been seven years of famine. Seven years of famine. Two years have passed. Now, we don't understand what famine is. There's five years left. If you stay where you're staying, you're going to dry up and you're going to die. But if you come to the place that I have pre prepared for you, I will nourish you. I will take care of you. I will provide for you if you come to this place. Amen. If you come here. Amen. That's where the blessing is going to be. So what we need to do, we need to find the place. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. And get in that place. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. And be blessed of the Lord. Yes. And you know what that place is. It's got no difference. It's, it makes no difference whether you're at the Baptist church or the Baptist church. Assembly of God church is it's because, let me get to this point. The place he had for them was a picked out, wonderful place. It's called the land of Goshen. Goshen. And the word Goshen means to draw near. Joseph wanted his brothers close to him. See, I don't understand why people don't want to go to church be close to a brother. Brothers, family loves family. Amen? Yeah. Oh, we might argue a little bit. We might get on each other's nerves every now and then. But when it comes down to it, we family. We are the family of God. We are the household of God. Right. That reminds me, when I lived with Grandma and Grandpa, when Mom and Dad was out preaching revivals, there was this couple that lived way across, way across the field. And their name was the Sullivan's. And buddy, you could hear all kinds of foul stuff from way over there as a kid 
coming out of that house. They, that's all they did. Fight. Mama fought, daddy, daddy fought, sister, sister fought, brother. I mean, they fought like cats and dogs. But I'm going to tell you something. One day somebody, somebody jumped on baby girl. And they jumped on, one of them neighbors jumped on baby girl. I'm going to tell you, the whole family came out of the house. The daddy, the mama, the brothers, the sisters, the cousins, the neighbors, everybody attacked that person. Because they were family. They were blood. And it's the same way with you and I. We may have differences of opinions, but we are all united by the blood of oh, Jesus yes. Christ. Yes. That is our common denominator. Jesus saved us. I, I don't care who you are. God saved you by his blood. He spilled it just as much for you Amen. as he did for me. Back to Joseph. This land of Goshen. To draw near. Joseph said, I want you here. God has brought me to this place. There's five more years. You know what five represents? Five. The number of five represents the grace of God. Every piece of furniture in that temple was divisible by the number of five. And everything about that temple spake of Jesus Christ and His work. And His work is a work of grace. I'm telling you that to tell you this. And somebody ought to just shout hallelujah. Y'all ain't going to disturb me at all. <laughs> not going to disturb me. I'm not going to run. Think about this. They were in Goshen. The drawing close. They were in Goshen in Egypt. Think about it, man. Think about it. They were in Goshen. We are in Christ. We are in the kingdom of God in this world. And no matter what happened, I don't care if Kamala, Jubala, Kudala, or Huda, Huda. I don't care what happened. I, I do care what happens. But I can tell you this, and I ain't going to take God by surprise. Because I'm in Goshen, in Egypt. I'm in Christ, uh, in the world. My economy's got nothing to do with the world. My economy has something to do with Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. My provider. Today, we are in faith. Faith in Christ. I say, you know, some people don't know what faith is. Some people never had that time where they couldn't pay the electricity bill and didn't know where it was going to come from. But God came through. It's easy to talk about faith when you've got plenty. I'm kind of like that guy in Proverbs. said, God, I, I don't want to be rich because if I'm rich, I might learn not to trust you. But God, if I'm so poor, if a little poor boy might want to steal something, then I'll become a thief. And I don't want to be that way. So somewhere in, somewhere in those grounds, Lord, I want, to, I want to meet in the middle with you. I want to be blessed. Uh, but I want to be to the place, God, where I still got to trust you each and every day. Hallelujah. Yes. Oh, I'm like you. I think, man, what can I do with a couple million dollars? But you know what? Ain't it wonderful when you need money to get an air conditioner and you don't know where it's going to come from and it ain't in the budget, but somehow God moves Ooh, upon his yes, people, moves Lord. upon heart, and yes, God comes through. He's yes, the same God. Yes, Lord, I yes, tell you, he's the same God today as he was yesterday. Yes. And he loves us. Yes. I can't help myself from getting excited this morning. We're of the household of God. Yes. We belong to God. <clears throat> and it's by faith that we receive this morning. We, we receive by faith. You know, Daddy could have stayed home. Daddy could say, I'm too old, man. You know, old people don't move. They like to move. <laughs> old people don't like to move around a lot, you know. Settle in your place. But I'm going to tell you, stay where you're at, you're going to die. You're 
got to move. You got to move when God says to move. And he's all skeptical. Old Jacob, the man of God. And they told him, said, It's real. It's real, brother. It's real. It's real. <laughs> it's Holy Ghost fire. It's real. Ooh, yes, it is. It's real. Yes. But he was skeptical. But the Bible says when he saw them wagons coming, loaded down. Woo! When he oh, saw yeah. them loaded down wagon in the midst of of a two-year yes. famine. Yes. Hallelujah. He knew God was up to something. And the Bible said His Spirit revived. Hallelujah. Some people got to see something. Amen. Hallelujah. His Spirit revived. Yes. He became yes. refreshed yes. in the Lord. Yes, amen. Isn't it wonderful? That in the midst of the worst thing that could happen. Because this is a worldwide family. But yet God, His promise says, even in a time of famine, I'll take care of you. That we can be comforted by Amen. that this morning. Amen. Amen. I know, look, I'm, I'm, I'm on that social security thing too, you know. You know, and every now and then everybody gets excited. Oh, they fix it, cut it loose, and <laughs> what, what's going? On? Hey, I'm, hey, you get a little bit old, you get a little bit vulnerable. So I can't get out here and plow a mule like I used to. But you know what? God said, "I'll take care of you." I've never seen a squirrel that died of a heart attack because it thought it didn't have enough nuts to get it through the winter. Right. God said, "I'll take care of them." I'm going to take care of you. Do you believe that this morning? Amen. Yes. You belong to the house of the Holy God. I'm going to ask the gentleman to come this morning. I may have went a little long, and I feel like I... I, I, I tell you what, I feel this in my spirit. I really do.